I just want to hop into that point right there where you brought up that with inside of franchising, it's already got the playbook for you. It's already set up for success because a lot of times when people start businesses, it's blank slate, no, no idea. And you're just like, all right, we're going to hop in. But a franchise, they have the backing, they've done it before and they show you how to make it successful. So I just wanted to jump right in, but you, you keep going with your story. Yeah. Yeah, that is very, very true. So I found out later how important that was. Well, I was, uh, after I became a manager and I got into engineering, uh, uh, one of my fellow engineers and myself, we bought a dry cleaners, privately owned dry cleaners. We ran that, uh, attempted to. Um, he got a lot better at it than I did after a while, but we ran that one. That was like, we had no clue as to what to do. So we had to go out and find out for ourselves. How do you run a dry cleaners with drop-off locations? We bought some storage units, bought some rental properties, and we ran those together. And it was like, you know, we're on our own. Fortunately, we had each other and we kind of helped each other out. But after I got out of the corporate world, that's when I thought, you know, that franchising thing was really good. I don't have the latest, greatest idea. So I need to go out and find a, <laughs> uh, a franchise to get into because, you know, I tried that private business thing and it was, a, you know, I go out and buy one, but it was a real challenge doing everything, you know, you're completely on your own, nobody there to help you. Uh, there's good and bad points about it. Don't get me wrong. Some people are best with going to a privately owned business. Franchising isn't for everybody, but uh, I decided I wanted to get into franchising. So I went click happy and all over the place, clicking on all sorts of different franchise opportunities. I got franchise of them, people calling me all over the place, very confusing. And finally, I got a hold of a franchise consultant, never knew they existed. <laughs> and he said, okay, put everything on hold. Let's take a look at what your goals are, what your aspirations are, where have you been, where are you at now, where you want to be, and let's narrow that down. With his help, I got into a franchise uh, and then ran that one for a while. That and was wonderful, good franchise. And then I decided that this is such a good thing. I wanted to help other people do it. I liked what he did. So I told him, show me what you do. Teach me what <laughs> you do. That was about 10 years ago, and I have not looked back since, and it's just been a whole lot of fun. That's incredible. And when, it, when I think about it, because we're heading into 2024, the new year's starting off in a couple weeks, uh, literally next week, actually. And the thing is, a lot of people, there's a lot of talk about buying businesses up because there's people who are getting older and there's different opportunities. What was the thought process when you bought that? Like, I want to take you back to that point where you bought the laundromat. Were you working a full-time job and then you tried doing the laundromat on the side? Like, how did that work? Because I know a lot of the audience is sitting there right now going, this guy has done it a hundred times. Like, how could, how could I do that? I'm just working my job and I'm trying to figure out what side hustle to jump into. <laughs> so, it's a, you know, a good question, Jordan. That's what I did was actually when I was an engineer, I'm working for that. I was also getting my master's degree in business and I read. Oh, wow. Yeah, I read Robert Kiyosaki's book, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Uh, so yeah. I was get, getting my master's, uh, I read that book, and that pretty much ruined the corporate career. And I thought, you know, there's got to be something better out here. So uh, for a friend of mine, even a fellow engineer, we were just talking once, and uh, we just said, you know, let's get into a business together because we got to have something on the side because people are getting laid off all the time in our business. Yeah. Uh, you know, microelectronic circuit in the semiconductor industry quite a bit. Well, so we... We got into right. that. He he just found that, you know, uh, somebody that he knew was selling the business. So we thought, hey, we're engineers. We know how to do everything. We can do anything. So, you know, let's get into this business. Dry cleaning can't be that bad. You just clean the clothes, right? Uh, exactly. So we, yeah. So we did that. And uh, we uh, we learned a lot by ourselves along the way on that one. But we bought in that one. We did it on the side. We were running our day jobs doing that. So with a private owned business, having to do it all yourself and not knowing exactly what's going on, there was a little bit, I would say, a lot of extra work going in there. So there were times during lunch that I'd take off and go check on the uh, the dry cleaners and go stop by the uh, the drop off locations, make sure everybody was doing doing good and everybody was okay, you know, keeping in touch with my employees. And then after work, I might you know stop by there and uh, see what's going on, help them out, greet some of the customers occasionally as well. Just to let them know that you know I was the one doing it. My partner was doing it as well. But it was something that we could do on the side. We were probably putting in, you know, another 15 hours or so uh, on yeah. top of our day jobs on top of that. So it wasn't too terribly time consuming on that one. Uh just a little bit of a stress, not uh not knowing where to turn necessarily when when things were wrong, like you know, a machine breaks down or 
uh, you know, something goes wrong. It's like, all right, now where are we going to find the parts? Who do we go look for? Where do we find this? What do we do here? So that's why uh, I like the franchising because when I got into the franchising world, all those questions you got answers to because the franchiser was right there to answer them and the other franchisees that you made friends with. But between the two of us, yeah, we ran those drop-off locations, had some storage units as well, had to figure out how to do those on the side. But uh, it was uh, it was something you could do on the side, and it was something that was long-term. And my buddy, Robbie, he just he took them over after we both left the corporate world, and he ran with it. And I said, no more private businesses for me. I'm going to go do that franchising thing. <laughs> 